In the fall of 2013, Gary Temple Bodley began channeling a group of non-physical teachers known as Joshua. Soon thereafter, Joshua asked Gary to start writing. They have since produced four books and answered hundreds of questions in written form. In the spring of 2016, on the Law of Attraction cruise, Gary underwent hypnosis and Joshua spoke through him for the first time. Since that time, Gary has been practicing channeling Joshua verbally in live weekly calls with one-on-one students. These Joshua calls are now available to those of you joining us on the leading edge of thought. This is the expansion of the Law of Attraction. This is Joshua Live. We're thrilled you're here. We are thrilled to be here. (laughs) Welcome Welcome. back. Thank you so much for having us. It's indeed our pleasure to be part of this journey of yours. We couldn't help. We could not help but eavesdrop on your conversation before. And and we are hoping that someone somewhere will stir it up because there's nothing better than stirring up the stagnant energy. Mm. Energy is all around you, yet you are uh, reluctant to engage it. You are reluctant to uh, jump into it, to stir it up, to mix it up, just in case you might step on someone else's toes or be inappropriate or have someone think badly of you. We say, who cares what they think? It doesn't matter what anyone thinks anyway because you're just making it up anyway. They're not thinking that much about it. And whatever anyone's thinking comes through their uh, lens of their own perception. So stir it up. Jump in. See what happens. See how it feels. See where things go. You know, when you engage this energy of the universe, this energy that's all around you all the time, when you consciously recognize it and bring it in, just as we are doing right now, if you can sense our energy, this is the energy of the universe that's available to everybody. Everyone can tap into it. When a basketball player is in the zone, he is tapping into this energy. When you are having a fun conversation and thoughts are flowing to you, you are tapped into this energy. This energy is available for you all the time. The only way you block this energy is for fear that you might do something, say something, be something inappropriate. But there is no inappropriateness. That's just man-made creations based in fear. So who cares? Who cares? Just do it. So who's got something inappropriate to say? Fuck you. There we go. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck everybody. Fuck us all. Who can be inappropriate, right? (laughs) If you say fuck you to a being of pure positive love, all they can do is interpret that as a compliment. (laughs) It would be impossible to embarrass or uh, insult a being of pure positive love and acceptance. You know why? Because they just cannot interpret anything as wrong. They can only interpret it as right. So they can't be humiliated. They can't be embarrassed. They can't do anything wrong because it's just is within, it's not within their boundary of perception. And if you can adopt that kind of idea where you can be who you authentically are, and then authentically love who you authentically are, and then authentically understand that other people are bound by their limitations and fears, then however their being doesn't matter to you, right? It only matters to you if you have some sort of issue with yourself. If you had no issues with yourself, if you had no fears, if you were authentic, if you believed that what you were doing and what you were thinking and what you were saying was true to who you are, was why you came here to explore, then nobody could ever say anything to you that would upset you. The only possibility for you being upset is an indication of some fear that you still have or some issue that you're trying to resolve. And in that case, it's a wonderful thing. Thank God that you are being given this information. But... If you have no issues, right, if you're without fear, if you're just living life fearlessly, then what someone says to you will either be completely missed by you or you'll understand that it's coming from a place of their own issue or it's coming from a place of their own fear or you'll love them anyway. It won't matter. So in that case, you can't say anything 
or trample on anyone's toes by you being authentically you. Because there is enough room, intelligence, infinite possibilities for everyone to be who they authentically are. It's only fear from a society who asks you to be different than you are just so that they can feel better. And we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to be fine with who we are. And especially in this loving group of like-minded co-creators. But wait, so this tendency that I have to say stuff, it, how do I know if it's just, if it's a part of my persona that I need to change? Or if it's like a part of my persona or personality that I should embrace? Or if it's a part of my personality, which sort of I think of as a part of my soul? How do I know which is a part of the persona and which is the personality? How do I know what to keep and what to try to get rid of? Keep the love stuff, get rid of the fear stuff. I don't know which is... Love I don't stuff feels good, how to... fear stuff feels bad. Okay, so let's just say that you go along in your society being good and being polite and being kind and doing the things that your society deems as good and not doing the things that your society deems as bad. You do that so that you won't, won't cause any adverse reaction from society, right? So then if you say something and it's perceived as rude, for instance, then you will feel bad, right? You will have this negative emotion. You will think that you did something wrong. However, it's only on the behalf of the perceiver to feel bad. Now, if the perceiver feels bad because you did something rude and they say something to you, or if you get in an argument with something with somebody and they feel bad on their part and then you feel bad on your part, it's all based on fear. But if you are being who you authentically are, then you're going to have to work through that fear of upsetting other people because it is much more... Uh, difficult for you to be someone you're not. That feels like a lie, doesn't it? But wait, because at the round table, not the last one, but the one before that, I perceived it as I said something and I thought it was snapping. I thought I said it out of negative emotion and you said it was inspiration. How do I separate that? Because when I think I'm doing something out of fear, you're telling me afterwards that it's inspiration. That doesn't make sense. When you said that, you were saying something you were inspired to say because you felt that the uh, conversation was going off topic, right? Yeah. And, so and that, I felt bad. Right. And so we will, we will agree that you felt negative emotion and you wanted to change the conditions. And so yeah. you said, let's bring it back on topic or whatever you said. Yeah. I want to talk about this, is what you said. Now, yeah. everyone else agreed with you. that Let's get it back on topic. Everyone else thought it was a wonderful idea to go back on topic. Everyone else realized that, yes, they were off to topic, and thank God you brought them back on topic. Right? But you perceived it as snapping, or as, going, or, or as doing something inappropriate, where no one else believed that. But I was trying to change other people. You were, you were trying to change other people, but the people didn't take it that way. You were trying to bring it around to what you were interested in. But it was still out of negative emotion. And what, that, what you're saying is that we should not act on this negative emotion. So what I should have done, of course, should doesn't exist. But anyways, what I should have done was to just shut up, right? So how... Well, actually, How the if fuck you, am I supposed if, to know? If you had shut up, you would have felt worse. You would have continued the negative emotion, right? It would have been um, more inauthentic for you to shut up. For you to say something was being your authentic self. Even if I felt bad. Yes, but you didn't really feel bad. You only felt bad because you thought it was inappropriate. Had you been your authentic self you would not have thought that that was a bad thing to do. You would have thought, I am part of this podcast. This podcast is going off topic. Let's bring this back on topic. And you would have done that in a high emotional state of being. The only 
way that you went into a lower emotional state of being, especially after the fact. We will say that at the time of it, you weren't in a low emotional state of being, but you dipped into it when you thought that you had snapped or that you had done something inappropriate. But it's still trying to change other people or control the situation. We would say that you were inspired to bring more to it, to advance it. And, and so that, that is a very tricky situation, we will agree. So let's just say, for instance, that you want to advance this conversation. We want to advance this conversation. If mm-hmm. Kyla jumped in with another topic, we would not think that Kyla was wrong. We would want to guide the conversation towards the greater good of it all. And it would naturally do that. So we would not drop into a low, lower emotional state of being if Ky- Kyla or anyone else jumped in and went off on another tangent, but we would bring it back to where we thought the higher good of the whole conversation would go. And that's what we think you were doing. It's only after the fact that you thought that that was inappropriate. But okay, so this is the last question today, right right now, maybe. <clears throat> but how, because you told me I need to, I, I, well, not need, but okay, I don't know what other word to use, but that I, it would be better for me if I could change my persona or let it go. But I don't know how to do that. Okay. All of you have a persona. This is your idea of who you think you are. Right. And basically your persona is your defense mechanism. It is saying that I am a good person, I am intelligent, I am loyal, I am this and this and this and this and this. Right? Yet who you really are is a limitless being of pure positive love and acceptance. And your persona is something different than that. Now, if your persona is rigid, then you will feel negative emotion more substantially when your idea of yourself is tested. And generally, you test that idea yourself, or you judge yourself as not living up to your persona. Right? You have this idea of who you are, and then you act in ways that doesn't align with that idea of who you are, and then you think that you did something wrong. If you get into an argument with somebody and they test some aspect of your persona that you believe is core to who you are, like loyalty or, um, or intelligence or things like that, or being a good mother or being a good mate or being a good daughter or whatever it is, you will, your ego will try to protect your persona and you will either withdraw and feel terrible or lash out and attack the other person and make them wrong. Right. What, what everyone should do is realize that their persona is a false construct of who they are and allow that idea of who they are to be malleable. So you are not simply this or this or this. You are truly a limitless being of pure positive love and acceptance. Okay, That's who you are. Everything else that you add to that or that you layer on that is just a defense mechanism. And if you can let it go, you will feel less negative emotion because your ego has nothing to protect. Right? Mm. So if you say something you think is wrong, it's based on the fact that you're not living up to this persona that you've created. And when your persona is rigid, you feel really bad about it. When your persona is flexible, you go, hey, I just made a mistake, no big deal. Nobody cared anyway. No one even noticed that sort of thing. Right. And it's different for different people. Uh, if Kyla said something inappropriate, she wouldn't care because at this stage, she is unapologetically her. But two years ago, she might have cared. Two years ago, if someone called her a bad mother, she might have cared about that. Would you agree with that, Kyla? Yeah, I would have. And now, if someone calls you a bad mother, you think, well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I'm doing the best I can. (laughs) Maybe that's their opinion. They're entitled to their opinion. I'm doing what I can do. And there you are. 
So you're not yeah. tied to this idea of this one aspect of yourself. You're, you're um, allowing yourself to be more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Astrid, when you do anything, anything, it is always the right thing. When you snap, it is the perfect time to snap. But no one else would have called it snapping. It's just that you called it snapping based on this persona that you're trying to protect. This persona of someone who is respectful, for instance, or who is, you know, loving, and this, and and that may be appearing not to be loving, for instance, right? So, when everyone else thought it was a great idea that you brought the conversation back, you were trying to protect a part of your persona by judging it as wrong. So, if you can just give up that idea of judgment at all, that you could ever be wrong, that anyone could ever be wrong, that there is any wrong, then everything else will be so much easier. So the problem isn't the snapping, but the, mm-hmm. but that I say to myself that it's wrong to snap. Exactly. It is not wrong okay. to snap. Right. It is so right I can to continue snap. to snap. Snap away. Good. Okay. <laughs> snap away. Snapping away. You, you, were in, you were inspired to snap. And it, was, it wasn't a snap, by the way. You were inspired to bring the conversation back to this high level that you felt it was at because you enjoyed that high level. And hmm. when it deteriorated into little small talk, you were saying to yourself, <laughs> let's bring it back up to the high level. And then when you, when, you, when you did what you were inspired to do, you just judged it as wrong. But you could have judged it as right. You could have said... That was a wonderful thing to do. It made the show much better. And we would believe that uh, 99.9% of the listeners agreed with you. That that was the thing to do. The bring it back. Bullshit. Who's okay. that? No, I totally agreed with you when it happened. I don't even yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember, Astrid. Okay, good, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, since you don't know what 99.9% of the listeners thought, you can make up whatever you want to make up. So you can make up that people thought you snapped. You could make up that there are 6 million people listening and they all thought you were wrong. You could make up that there's 6 million listening and they all love you better than everyone else. You can make up that you are the most important part of of the podcast. You can make it all up. So we are expressing in our utmost emphasis to make up a story that is empowering because it's your story and you get to make up whatever you want and it's just as valid as any other story because you cannot know the truth and the truth wouldn't matter anyway because it's always filtered through every individual's perception of their own reality and their issues and fears and and stuff like that. So what if one of us would have said, oh, Astrid, that's so rude. And Astrid, I honestly don't even remember what you said. But uh, for other other scenarios, and like in my life, if, if I was to say, oh, you know, I don't want to play with you right now, Astrid. And Astrid gets mad at me. Then how does, how does that all play out? So that is a very excellent example of what we're talking about here. So you have a fear and the fear is that Astrid said something that was bad or wrong and that fear creates an urge to defend yourself to defend whatever but, or to, but primarily to get rid of that fear in yourself and so in a reaction you might choose a tactic of attacking the other person making them wrong so that you can feel right mm. you see and that comes from a low emotional state of being or it comes from fear. Gotcha. And if there's fear involved, you will get these urges to do things that uh, do not align with who you really are. You might get angry and punch a wall. You might curse under your breath. You might do a lot of things, right? When mm-hmm. Gary was um, in that conversation with uh, Kyla... And um, it got, Kyla was being attacked. Gary jumped to Kyla's defense. And that was a reaction from fear, right? And it did not um, 
was not that action was not aligned with who he really is. Right. He should have mm-hmm. or could have uh, done done a better job of that and allowed what was to happen to happen. Right. It all worked out anyway. Right. Yeah. It all, but it was a speed bump, we will say, in the whole process of everything. So there is no reason to get to allow fear to bring up and to act on fear because you can look at the fear and you can see the fear is irrational. So, Wendy, if you thought that Astrid had said something appropriate and you felt fear, the fear might be um, that the content of the program would, was going downhill or was not effective or, was, or she was being impolite, right? Well, a person being impolite, how could that cause you fear anyway? And really, is it so easy for you now to see how irrational that kind of fear is? So yes. at this point, at this stage of the game for you, when a slight insult happens to you, you can see that it comes your uh, urge comes to defend yourself from a very irrational fear, and you can stop in the moment and realize that there is no need for anything to be said or done or to act on any urge, but to instead focus on what it is you want. And what you want is Mm -hmm. harmony and love and to be a limitless being of pure positive love. Right? So that's very easy for you now. But maybe years ago, it might have been different. Right. Right. Now, what happens when somebody close to you says something or does something that you perceive as an insult? Right. Like, so the closer the person is to you, the more fear that you feel. Because it could mean it's going to derail the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it it might mean a life-changing event could happen. You might end up getting divorced or not speaking to this person for years or whatever happens, right? And right. so those fears are more intense, and then you feel more um, stronger urges to react, to stop it in the moment, to change the conditions that are happening. But what's really happening is that the person is allowing you to realize that you have this irrational fear going on. And you can't really move forward to receive that which you want while this fear is still so strong within you. Because this fear oh. is limiting, right? Huh. And without okay. them saying or doing what they think they are doing, right, <clears throat> you can't recognize the strength of that fear. Mm. And you can see this in people around you very easily. Mm-hmm. There's obvious examples of this going on all the time. Um, so the stronger the fear, the more stronger the urge is going to be to, to change the conditions. But those first impulses and first urges you get are not going to be aligned with who you really are. They won't be aligned with love. They'll be aligned with fear. And so you can stop where you are, realize what's happening, what that fear is coming from, and, and uh, move on from there. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty good. They know how to mute. Yeah. <laughs> we know a lot of things. We are very technologically advanced. <laughs> so well, when, thank when, you, Astrid. when Gary and Lily have arguments mm-hmm. and they get intensely angry at each other, it's because they don't want to lose what they have. So the fear is of this loss of this relationship. And so they are able, even as advanced as they are, they still react negatively by saying things that they would not normally have said. Hmm. Yeah. So they're able to get back to a a state of well-being quicker because they understand that the negative state is not going to do anything to uh, move forward the the issue that they have and they're wise enough now to realize that whatever that is fear is coming from it's a fear that needs to be resolved one way or the other gotcha that makes so much sense thank you for that question astrid Mm -hmm. i had something similar happen where i was at my parents house this weekend and i 
felt like I was in a high emotional state. The boys, had ju- I mean, we were sitting at dinner. My parents had friends over and the boy, my youngest said, mom, I want to go to bed. And my oldest said, yeah, me too. And they brushed uh-huh. their teeth and went straight to bed and laid down. And I was like, all right, this is awesome. And so I went back and sat down with my parents and their friends and we were just having a conversation and I was feeling good and it turned to politics. And then my mom I wasn't really participating. I was just kind of listening. And then my mom said something and she said, yeah, Kyla is our resident liberal. And for some reason it like, I just reacted and I was like, I'm not a liberal. (laughs) Just like (laughs) like I snapped back Mm -hmm. and then uh, recognized that, I don't know. So I've been looking at that and trying to figure out why, like what the fear was, why that, I don't know, triggered me so much. Cause I, I there's a persona issue there. Yeah. Right. So, you have this idea of who you are and mm-hmm. you're part of this family and you want don't want to be seen as an outsider to the family. Mm-hmm. And so you just, in the moment, have this quick fear that now you are mm-hmm. an outsider to this family of, mm-hmm. of a different kind of thought process. Right. And you're, you want to be who you are unapologetically, which is different than they are. And what you're hoping is that you will not be ostracized from this family or from this group, right? Yeah. And so you want to, (laughs) you want to maintain that this idea that you are like them so they will not kick you out. That's so funny. Cause like probably it was probably the night before that conversation, I had this dream and in it, my family, like my parents and the boys and I were all supposed to be going on a cruise and they were saying something and my mom was sort of in this dream almost mocking some sort of new thought type idea and I just blew up and lost it and I was like but that's what I think I believe this and I believe that and I just like unleashed all of it and my parents took my kids and they went on the cruise without me (laughs) so we're not gonna leave you (laughs) this is a common theme for those of you who are embarking on a new approach to life. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to leave Mm -hmm. behind those who won't come with you. And you don't want to be abandoned by those who won't come with you. You you think that those people um, must be in every aspect of your life. And if they aren't in every aspect of your life, then they either come with you in it or Mm -hmm. you're going to renounce the new approach to life or you're going to try and juggle both things at the same time right Mm. but it doesn't matter if they come with you or they don't come with you if you're being of love and acceptance you can accept them if they come along with you you can accept them if they disagree with you you can accept them if it takes them longer to come with you you can accept them if they leave Mm. it's this fear of loss that you have that is the only thing that's getting in your way. And it is a limiting fear. It's a completely irrational fear because you can't lose anyone that you've known. You're eternally connected to everyone. The, this group here is eternally connected for the rest of eternity. <laughs> everyone you know, mm-hmm. even the people you hate, are you're, you're connected with. <laughs> right? So you can't lose anyone. You can't lose anything. It's, this is an attractive universe. Once you've attracted something into it, you have the essence of that with you forever. When you've attracted another soul, you have that that soul is with you forever. Have we been together in other lives, this group? This group has been interacting for eons. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. And many others. Mm-hmm. Others who are listening to this, others who are getting inspired to to write questions or uh, be on the podcast or come to listen to these uh, podcasts or or listen to the meditations or read the books. It's mm-hmm. all this fun interaction. This is the leading edge of the leading edge. Mm-hmm. And you've mm-hmm. chosen these weird lives that you've had because you knew the trajectory <laughs> of that would l- link you up at some point. Hmm. That's so it's cool. Strange to yeah. think how how we got all here. Yeah, <laughs> all together yeah. and all those coincidences that happened. <laughs> if you had written out your goals in 2014, I have the goal to 
make X amount of money. I have the goal to get promoted at work. I have the goal to do this and do that. I have the goal to link up with all my eternal friends. By <laughs> right. You don't make your own goals. You set intentions. <laughs> you allow what's, what you intended to happen. That's all you're doing. And then there are those who wish they were part of this, who are resisting it every step of the way. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Because of fear. Yep. I have one other quick question um, about, so I've been, I've talked before several times about feeling like I'm in this holding pattern and I just didn't know what my next step was. And last mm-hmm. night I had this idea or I was talking with a friend and she said something and it sparked this idea that feels like, Oh my gosh, this is my next step. Um, And so it involves like in terms of the podcast stuff or whatever the whole idea of that is going to be, I've imagined it all like being focused online, but this idea is a way for me to sort of connect with people in my community and go at it from a different direction, still end up in the same sort of place that I see, you know, assuming that I can project that far into the future. But Mm -hmm. so what is, I guess, am I on track here? Is this the next step? It felt inspired. I was in a really good high emotional state. uh, Is it exciting? Is the idea exciting? It's so exciting. So then the pursuit of that idea is the next step. Right. The research of the idea, the fleshing it yeah. out, the trying it out, the uh, organizing it in your mind, the planning mm-hmm. stages, that's the next, next step. Uh, yeah. Because in that process, you might get another step that you can't, right. th- that you don't know where it's coming from. What we want to put emphasis on here is that the belief that you're stuck mm-hmm. is the only thing that keeps you stuck. The yeah. The belief that Things are flowing. I the, things are working themselves out. Things are happening all around me. I just don't see them. And when right. it's ready, it will hit. That creates an environment of allowing. But if you think that you're stuck and you should be doing this and you should be doing this and you should be doing that, then all that is doing is resisting what is coming to you anyway. And when it comes, you'll see it and you'll say, "Why did I worry so much about being stuck?" Yeah, I've already, I mean, I was just thinking that while you were talking about something earlier about how looking back, you know, I felt like I've been, this, I've been in this holding pattern and feeling like I haven't been productive necessarily in the way that I've been spending my time. But looking back, I see how all these things that I'm doing, even if it's just texting back and forth with a person and like condensing these like big thoughts that I have down into a little text block, how that's helping me, you know, when I go to write a blog a blog post, helping me be concise and, you know, be able to focus my thoughts and express them in a way that's easy to understand and quick to ingest. And Exactly. Yeah. The things that you think aren't important or are little are the things that are building the foundation of what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You're always moving forward, even when you're just thinking about it and not doing anything. Mm-hmm. It's that you have this action-oriented society where you think you need to Mm. be doing, 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 and when you're not doing, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. It is a flawed premise in your society that uh, people should be working, should be Mm. doing, because what, what they're doing mostly is working out of alignment, and when they work out of alignment, they're completely unproductive. And when they work Mm -hmm. in alignment, they have the power of the universe behind them, and you could not be more productive. Mm -hmm. So it's really a waste of time to do anything when you're in that mode of planning and preparing and thinking, and that's that's what the work is. That's what the productivity Mm -hmm. is, engaging the universe and feeling good. And if you don't feel Mm -hmm. good, don't do anything. Get back to feeling good, and then feel good, and then just engage the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. So how do you feel yeah. at work today? Oh, pretty good. I, <laughs> it's funny because I, I got a text from the girl that I work with last night saying, telling me how busy it had been and showing me her, you know, paper with all the ses- sessions that she'd been having. 
and asking me to do as many as I could today. And so I just, I woke up this morning and did the whole like intention setting before I even opened my eyes. You know, I intend to feel good. I intend to be excited. I intend to connect with people. I intend to, you know, be open to inspiration and all these things. And I detached from the idea of missing this call. I mean, it, there was a little bit of a blip because it was just last week when you were like, have you missed any of these podcasts? And I was like, no. And I was like, well, now I'm going to have to miss one, you know, <laughs> but I just, I just let it go and I was, it's going to be fine. Gary can record it. You know, it's all going to work out. Maybe I'll make a lot of money, all these things. And so I roll in and there were four people that wanted photos and I could have probably arranged it so that they worked around this call, but I decided to just let it go and just, I wanted to be relaxed and easy about it. So I was going to text Gary and I went in and talked to those people and three of them just didn't want photos. So I only uh. had one to do today. And so it's just been really relaxed and easy and I've been in a good mood and I've been like texting my friend that yeah, I have a lot of fun texting with. And so it's just, yeah. It's been a good day. So that is an amazing day. thing that you're able to consciously prepare your day by setting intentions before you even open your eyes. Mm -hmm. How many of you yeah. do that? Gary doesn't even do that. Mm -hmm. No. That is an Sometimes. excellent practice. It's, I am getting better at it and I do it the most on Tuesday mornings because Monday nights I go to karaoke and so I'm usually out <laughs> until, you know, two, even if I'm not getting crazy, I'm just like out really late. And so I wasn't in bed until three 30 and I know I have to get up at six 30 or seven. And so I actually really helps that I function. I feel like I've had, you know, six or seven hours of sleep. I don't feel a big difference because I intend before I go to bed to, you know, to wake up feeling well rested and to feel good in my body and to feel good in my mind and to feel clear and focused. And then when I wake up in the morning, Tuesdays, Tuesdays are the easiest day for me to do this where I do it before I even open my eyes because I used to just wake up with this like impending sense of doom sort of, mm. um, that I used to feel all the time, every day, every minute of my life. And I don't feel that anymore, but I still felt it every Tuesday morning when I woke up and knew that I had to go to work and I didn't want to be at work. So yeah, it yeah. is it's super helpful. So you can intend to feel good, go with the flow, be happy, take it as it comes, realize that everything's coming for you, or you mm -hmm. can wake up and dread the day ahead before the days even mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. And so which one of those approaches engages the power of the universe? Intention. <laughs> Setting intentions for what you want rather than dreading what you don't want that hasn't even arrived yet. And mm -hmm. if you dread what you don't want that hasn't even arrived, chances are it's going to arrive. It's going to show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you are intending either way. Right? Mm -hmm. If you were worried about something, then... The, you are feeling the fear of that thing in the present moment, even though that's never happened or it hasn't happened yet. And you are preparing yourself and sort of expecting it to happen if it does happen. Or you can intend what you do want to happen. So it's focusing on what's wanted or focusing what's on what's unwanted. Mm. And it's your choice, mm. you know. <laughs> it's, it's your judgment of how things are. You can judge anything as good or anything as bad. It's all neutral. It's only until you bring your judgment to it that it means anything anyway. Mm. Right. So you ha if you focus on a positive way, on things, the aspects of things that you might have otherwise thought were negative, if you focus on just the positive parts of those things, those things will grow. And the negative parts will shrink. It's just mm -hmm. the design of the universe. But what you tend to do is you tend to solve problems, which means you have to identify the thing that you don't like and figure out a way to get rid of it. And that can work. You can get rid of it, especially if you're an employer. You can fire that person, right? Mm -hmm. But the new person is going to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not the person. It's the essence of the thing that you don't like. And so mm -hmm. you have to realize that to focus on the essence of the things that you do like and realize that other stuff is going to come into your experience and you are a vibrational match to it. And then you're going to have to think, why am I a match to this? Mm -hmm. uh. Does anyone have any specifics that we can point out uh. in an obvious way of things they don't want that keep showing up? I have one, but I don't want it to. 
I don't want to be ahead. rude. Go ahead. Go, Kyla, go. Be rude. Uh, Shake it up. So I have a couple different situations uh, with men who I've engaged with who want more from me than I am willing to give and who think that I should be different so that they can feel good. Yes. Exactly. So why am I a match to that? (laughs) Well... You were a match to that because it's natural. Uh, if you are a the most wonderful person in the world, wouldn't it be ma- natural for a person who doesn't realize that you that that they are able to attract whatever they want? They attract you. You seem so wonderful to them, and they want they have a fear of loss, and so they hold on to that. So it's not you that's attracting that, it's them that's attracting you, and their fear is that you will leave, or you will uh, come and go, not, and you won't be continuously there, as they're used to thinking in their society, right? They're used to finding this one and holding on to that one as long as they can mm-hmm. until they get bored with that one, and then leave that one, and they'll find someone else and hold on to that one. And they think that in a society that you have to be beholden to one person for a certain amount of time or forever, right? And the new idea is that you are able to experience whatever you want to experience. And if Mm -hmm. you want to experience a lifestyle where you interact with many people, some of those people are going to be approaching life from the old way, thinking that they need to hang on to you, otherwise they'll lose you. Right? Because mm-hmm. there's, l- there's less of you to go around. There's a lack of people like you. And once they right. find someone like you, they want to keep that, especially if that person doesn't really care about them because that sort of means something about them, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. it <clears throat> from, from their persona's mm-hmm. perspective... They feel that you should feel about them the way they feel about you because if you don't, they're going to interpret that as if there's something wrong with them. And so Mm -hmm. in order to defend their idea themselves, they're going to say there's something wrong with you because Mm -hmm. it can't be them. It can't be them who are unable to, um, to allow you to be who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's just the dynamic of the culture. So how do I deal? Like last yeah. night I found myself in this situation where this person is telling me um, like we had a falling out on his end, you know, and I was just, I just kind of let it be um, and then reached out when I felt inspired and let him have his say. But so I saw him last night and he was telling me about, I asked him, you know, is there anything else you want to say to me? And so he was telling me about just how he felt when this one thing happened and then you know he was saying you did this and that and then my self-esteem just sunk mm-hmm. and because he was you were trying to protect expect- your persona yeah yeah right me or or well if your self-esteem yeah. sunk oh no 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 he was telling me that his he was telling me that as a result of my actions his self-esteem sunk right and so he was wanting me to somehow correct that and right. i didn't I just stared at him because I didn't know what to say. And I couldn't say, well, that's your problem and you have to fix it. I mean, I could have said that, but I didn't. That I wanted would be to create harmony. <laughs> I know. Oh, I, up. <laughs> well, yeah. like, I want to foster harmony in that relationship still. So, and... what, so that's an excellent way to look at it. You can say that if he says that his uh, self-esteem dropped and that it's your fault... You can dip into a lower emotional state of being and feel fear that you've actually done something to hurt someone, which you do Mm. not want to do. And so from that perspective, you might have the urge to call him wrong or to say, listen, how you feel is up to you, not up to me. It's information Mm. that you know, but you're saying it in a way that makes him wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is say nothing realize that you are a limitless being of love and what's the other word acceptance and accept them for how they're being 
Yeah. You can accept him. You say, I am. I, ex- I understand how that would make you feel. It was not my intention. I hope you feel better. If there's anything I can do, I would be happy to help you through it. Would you like mm-hmm. to read a book I have? <laughs> <laughs> so, so she basically, basically that- Kyla doesn't have to roll over and say, okay, you're right. To be that, to be in the flow, to go with the flow, per se. Going with the flow is... Feel inspired. Going with the flow is allowing him to be who he is, but remaining authentically yourself. Mm. Right? So if you change yourself so that he can feel better, then you're not helping him at all. And you're being some other version of you that doesn't isn't representative mm. of who you really are. Yeah. Mm. It's not authentic. That's why there's a lot yeah. of inauthenticity going on. That's why there's a lot of mistrust going on. Because yeah. people are not being who they authentically are. They're being a version of themselves just so that they can keep the other person happy, just so the other person doesn't do anything to make them feel bad. Mm. Right? So mm-hmm. stop worrying about feeling bad. Feeling bad just means that in this little instant right here, you've taken a limited perspective and you can get back to the higher perspective and it's no big deal. And for some people, feeling bad feels really bad. For you all, you are all emotionally, highly emotionally tuned beings, especially now that you've been doing this work. So feeling bad feels even worse than it ever did before. And you think that you should not be feeling bad because you know better. Yeah. That's the worst part of that. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So now you're criticizing yourself for feeling bad, <laughs> thinking that your persona is one of these, your persona has added this layer of knowledge of universal forces and the mechanism of physical reality, so I should be this kind of person. Mm. Gary feels like that all the time. Whenever he gets upset <laughs> with somebody, he feels terrible because he sh- knows he knows better. But yet, that's just his persona. But then sometimes, well, at least for me, if sometimes it feels so good to say, fuck you, there's the door. And I feel really good afterwards. Mm. Well, it also feels good to punch the wall sometimes. Mm. But it isn't aligned with who you really are. But it does feel good because compared to how you were feeling, it feels better. But it also feels good to sort of stand up for yourself. And to finally say, I deserve better. You do deserve better, but not by making the other person wrong. You stand up for yourself Mm. by knowing who you authentically are and what you authentically deserve. But what you want is harmony, is to be a being of love and acceptance. And so you can stand up for yourself by just saying no, or just by leaving the room, or just by whatever... But when you feel better by making the other person wrong, you're just it feels good because it felt worse before. It feels good to punch somebody in the face because it seems like you have power. But the real power comes from being authentically who you are and allowing them to be whoever the hell they want to be. And realizing that they're in fear. The only reason they can be upset is because they're in fear. And if you have a little bit of empathy with their fear and empathy with your own fear, Mm. that's where the real power is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then you can both be authentically you. And you you can be authentically you. You can allow them to be whoever they're being because they're not being authentic if they're upset. Right, right, right. right. And you can understand that they have a fear. Their fear caused them to do or say something that affects your persona – And you will always have a persona. There's no getting over persona in physical reality. You will always have it. We're just saying, let let it be more malleable than it is. And let their statements bounce off you knowing that their statements are coming from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. And the closer that person is to you, a parent, a child, a mate, a sibling, the more fear you'll fear because the fear is the fear of loss of this relationship or connection, which is irrational because it can never be lost. Hmm. What about the fear of of me, of losing me, or of losing my persona, which I I need, I want to let go of that. So that's 
that's just a fear. I'm, I'm fearing if I give in to something or allow and go down this path, it's against my persona, yet it's really who I am, and I should let go of my persona and go. That probably made no sense to anybody but me. Yes, it did. And us. <laughs> yes, it did. We understand it perfectly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you could be someone who is, um, you know, interacts with the community, has an established family, and if you turn into this hippie, gypsy, mm-hmm. meditating Pollyanna. guru, right, <laughs> what will everyone think yeah. about you, right? So it's not the loss of your persona, it's the loss of these connections that you've established. Mm-hmm. Right? And if you are a pure being of love, you might be perceived as a unicorn with <laughs> rainbows coming out of its butt. <laughs> I love it. Right? And people are like, but if you are a being of love and acceptance, well, would you think that people would think you're weird? Or would you think that people would gravitate towards you? I'd like to think that they would gravitate towards me. Well, who would not gravitate towards you? Uh, Fearful people. Fearful people. Exactly right. Fearful that they couldn't be how you're being or that you being so aligned uh, causes them to feel so out of alignment. Right. And that is good for them. Right. The greatest, you are all teachers and you teach by being examples of alignment and by being Mm. who you authentically are Mm. and some people can't handle that yet right but they will yep and we cannot be taken advantage of you cannot you can never be taken advantage of of. yep you can only be taken advantage of when you're in fear Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. but when you are engaging the power of the universe the universe can't be taken advantage of. Right. Ever. Yep. Mm. So if you feel like, for instance, if you feel like you are being taken advantage of and you're always the one doing, 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 giving, 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 is that just persona coming? Because as a limitless being of pure positive love and acceptance, that would be what and who I am is the, just... The only time you would ever do anything is if you're inspired to do it and the inspiration to do it makes you feel great. It's what you want to do. Mm. The only time you're doing something that doesn't make you feel great is because you think you should be doing something to please others or to get some respect or to get some feedback or to get some good f- you know, results from someone else. It's a manipulation of others to do things mm. that you don't, aren't inspired to do, right? So if you are doing, doing, doing everything, you're the one saying, thank God I'm doing everything, right? Right. If you are a stand-up comedian and you're always the one on stage, you always want to be the one on stage. You don't want anyone in the audience to be on stage. You want to be the one on stage, even though you're the one giving, 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 because you're the one who wants to be on stage, You don't want to sit down and give anyone else a turn to be on stage because you want to be the one on stage. And you could say, well, that person is giving so much of themselves. They're they're being so wonderful and giving their humor. But they're doing it for them, not for you. right? So in that essence, you could be the one cooking every night. And you're the one cooking because you love to cook. Not because you think you should be cooking or whatever or that other people aren't doing their thing. You're cooking because you love to cook. You're cleaning because you love to clean. No. <laughs> and if you don't love doing those things, then you're not going to, then you don't have to do them all the time. You can make agreements on who does what or, you know, how do we handle this and this and this, you know, so that it's fair. But in those, uh, whenever you're inspired to do something you want to do, it comes from a place of this energy of wanting to do this sort this thing and in that essence you could never be taken advantage of now let's just say that 
you have a situation with your husband and he has a job and he's making the money and so you are the one who's buying the groceries and cooking the food and cleaning the house and all that right Mm -hmm. and so on one hand he's supporting you and on the other hand you're supporting him and it's an equal arrangement and everyone's happy and everyone's getting to do what they want to do. You you don't have to go out and have a nine to five job and he doesn't have to cook and clean. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, if he wanted to have a situation where he did all the cooking and cleaning and everything, then he could still have his nine to five job and come home and still do all the cooking and cleaning and still be happy and not being taken advantage of because he enjoyed that cooking and cleaning part of it. Mm. As bizarre as that sounds, that's a possibility. Right. right. And then the other person could sit on the couch, watch TV, eat bonbons, and read magazines and feel totally content because the other person is doing what they want to do. It's only when everyone's not doing what they want to do that you have this conflict. Mm. So as long as you're in this inspired area, does your, for instance, does your husband love what he does? Yes. Okay. So for him... We will say it's a joy to go to work. We'll use that term yeah. joy. It just means uh, – doesn't mean he's skipping and dancing and singing the whole day. It means he's interested, engaged, likes who he's working with, likes the environment, feels fulfilled. That's joy, right? Right, right. And if he loved to cook and he came home and cooked every night, then you could feel guilty about him doing too much. But he wouldn't feel guilty about it. He wouldn't feel that he's being taken advantage of. He gets to have this wonderful job, and he gets to come home and cook. Right? Mm -hmm. And everything would be fine, and he couldn't be taken advantage of. What if he wants me to cook, and I don't want to cook? We're using an analogy. (laughs) What if I don't want to cook? So, don't cook. Is there anything that you want him to do that he doesn't want to do? Occasionally, yeah. Okay, so don't want him to do anything he wants to do. Uh, and then what happens? Gets mad. He gets mad because he yeah. because you're not being tension. who he wants you to be. Yeah, and then there's tension. But if you say, I want to be who I authentically am, which is a being of love, and I am going to allow you to be as mad as you want to be, how would that work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Never tried that. <laughs> so please be as mad as you want to mad be. Mad as you want. Yeah. Or you could just add too much salt to every meal and he would say, <laughs> this is why we go out to dinner tonight. Yeah. What, what, what we we're saying do. is that, that you allow him to be exactly who he is, you be authentically who you are, and then you work out the details in love. Right? Mm. You work out the details and love. You don't expect him to be any different than who he is ever in any situation ever. Okay. He could not, he could burn down the house and you'd be, I understand that you wanted to burn down the house and where are we going to go now? That's fine. I accept you for burning down the house. He could come quit his job and say, we're moving to New Zealand and say, <laughs> I'm not going, but have a nice time. Right. Right. Uh, the only reason you would get upset of him burning down the house or quitting his job is this feeling of fear of loss. And that fear of loss is always irrational. Because you are always taken care of no matter what. And every time you make up some story that you're not being taken care of, you're just resisting. right? And it's always based in some stupid little fear. If I don't cook, then he's going to you know, leave me and find someone else who can cook. Right. Right. That's the fear. So I have to cook just so that he doesn't leave me. Right. Right. Or just to keep the the peace. Or just, yeah, or he gets angry. I don't like it when he gets angry. But you get to the place where he can get angry and you don't care. Right. Yeah. That's, you can control your feelings so well and control your thoughts so well that you can accept him no matter what he wants. What what he does, I should say. We should Mm -hmm. say. Yep. 
Excellent. Now, this is really high-level stuff, yeah. and yeah. we're just talking about an overall perspective, and we understand right. that you work things out day by day, and you will always have these fears. We're just saying from this higher perspective, there is no reason for any of these fears, and there is no reason to ask someone to be different than they are, and the only reason you would ever ask anyone to be different than they are is because you have some fear. Hmm. And, and there is also nothing to, be, uh, nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. You are provided for. Yep. Mm, good. Good stuff. Thank you. See what you started, Astrid? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that whole conversation that's been a... amazing. That was you, Wendy. That was you. No, you started it. <laughs> okay. okay. Enough. <laughs> Oh, if you yeah, are a you. pure positive being of love and acceptance, can you be embarrassed? No. Can you receive a compliment? Yes. No. Er- everything's oh, yeah. a compliment. <laughs> if you are a pure positive being of love and acceptance, everything's a compliment. Everything's a compliment. And you can't be insulted. You cannot be embarrassed. Right. So, think about the times when you are insulted, when you are embarrassed, when you are stressed, when you are think, think things are going wrong. It's all this illusion, right? It's all based in some fear, a little fear. Yeah. Anyone yeah. have any good fears? Mm-hmm. Alette, do you fear people walking in and offering you yeah. work to do? And not today. Today I did really well. On the train to uh, to work, I re-listened to the podcast last week's podcast, and this was the second time. And uh, now I heard other th- other stuff on it. And uh, yeah. I, I, when I got into the office, I felt really good, and almost immediately <laughs> I got two calls asking us, uh, "Oh, can you do this urgently for us?" and uh, and then I immediately thought, oh, this is for me and uh, bring it on. Well, I didn't say that, but I said, okay, send it to us and we'll take care of it. And it really, it, it, it worked well and we did take care of it. And uh, I felt really good today. Isn't it's it awesome. interesting that when someone gets on the phone to call you and ask you to do something urgent, that they have fear. Mm. They are hoping you say yes. And they are fearful <laughs> that you'll say no, or we're busy, or we can't get to it right away, or uh, I don't know what we're going to do, or some kind of issue. But when you say, yes, we'll take it on, then their fear is relieved, and that just launches them into this much higher emotional state of being. I never thought about it like that. <laughs> Everyone has their own fears, right? From their perspective, yeah. there's a fear. And how you react to them by removing their fear makes them feel so much better. And when you okay. realize that nothing can come to you that isn't for you, then you can relieve your fear and you can engage the energy of the universe by feeling better. Right? So when you set your intentions as you did, you will notice that when things come to you, you can start thinking now at a little bit higher level. What are these other people thinking? What's, what could their fears be? How can I resolve their fears? How can I make it easier for them? Wow, yes. Exactly. Well, yeah. And then, <laughs> now you'll feel good because they feel good, and then you're automatically aligned with universal energy, and you'll have your millions of people helping you type out these translations in a snap. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yes. And you'll be <laughs> confident about what you're doing, too. Yeah. And then yeah, you'll, but... you'll give it back to the people who can't read the other language anyway, and they'll think, this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you really can make up your own story, a lot. <laughs> uh, no, because they all think they know English, and they, they can do it much better than anyone else. <laughs> They're all lawyers. <laughs> they think they can speak English, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you also said uh, last week something like um, uh, we are all being led to what we're now doing. And then you said, uh, well, Alette, uh, she's led to the translation process. And then I remembered that I started all this, um, well, uh, 15 or 16 years ago because I liked translating. I enjoyed it. And 
now I've I've ever since I've not done have nothing but fear that I not doing a good job. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the only thing that is causing you not to enjoy it is this fear that you're not doing a good job. Yeah. That's which stupid. is which is well, it's irrational. <laughs> it is. It, it, we wouldn't say it's stupid. It's just irrational, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have to do a good job. All you have to do is do what you can do. Yeah. There yeah. is no judge of a good job. But the idea that I was being led to do this, mm-hmm. th- th- that gives me uh, a kind of confidence. Absolutely. There's, there's only, everyone's led to do what they're doing. It's this, their fear of inadequacy that is causing them not to enjoy it as much as they would. You could be a uh, one who cultivates uh, orange trees. And all you do is sit in a field and water the trees and pick the oranges. And this is all you do your whole life. And you could be in total bliss doing this. Mm-hmm. As long as you thought you were good at it and you, and you thought you were productive and you got good feelings from it, you could do anything. And then everything you needed out of life, yes. all, the, all the things that you came here to explore could be done while focused on that one thing. Gary and Lily were watching a show about an American who went to Japan to study to be a bonsai um, gardener. And he, the first seven years of being a bonsai gardener (laughs) is learning how to water the tree. And so he waters the trees all day long for seven years before he's allowed to do anything else. And he is in pure joy watering these trees. He's not impatient to do more, and he's not needing anything else out of life other than this, because everything he needs to learn in this lifetime comes from the pursuit of that. And the wow. only thing that would uh, would interrupt this bliss is him thinking he should be doing something better with his life, or him thinking he should be further along in his career, or him thinking that other people think he's not worthy, or him feeling not worthy enough to do that thing too right so there's a resistance around every corner and it's your job to realize that if you have an interest in something you're worthy of that thing and the only uh resistance or the only thing that makes it not pleasurable is your fear of whatever unworthiness inadequacy um, yeah that you could be what other people think (laughs) what other people think exactly yeah yeah exactly right yep so you cause your own feelings of bliss or resistance to bliss in whatever you're doing. Wendy can be the same thing. Wendy can be uh, the most enthused, engaged uh, real estate to the uh, leading edge of thought community. She could be the LOA realtor in Southern <laughs> California. Right? She could be completely engaged in that and be uh, receive everything she wants out of life by pursuing this one thing. She can uh, provide love and service and all that if she had no resistance to it. Well, what about people who don't do anything? Were they led to not do anything? There is nobody who doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your opinion that they're not doing anything. But they're doing things that we would say could be considered um, not physically productive, right? But they're still doing things. They're still being. They're still living. They're still. If your eyes are open, you are doing something. You are experiencing life. It's like saying there's a wrong way to watch a movie. You know, there is no wrong way to watch a movie. I should get my boyfriend to listen to that. <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> Unless you're eating popcorn loudly, that would be. Oh. Or trying, or, or consistently asking, who's that guy again? In the movie. <laughs> Do that during a football match. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as long as your eyes are open, 
you are living life, expanding in the process of experience, and doing everything that you need to be doing. Okay, And uh, what you came here to do is completely different than what your neighbor came here to do, or the homeless person, or the president of your country, or the pop star. There is no levels. There is not one better than the other. Everyone is equally worthy, and everyone is doing what they're here to do, whether they're resisting it or whether they're fully engaged with it. And the only thing is your judgment of, is am I doing enough or am I doing too little or is that person doing enough or is that person doing too little? That's just judgment. And all judgment is based in fear. So judge yourself as good and worthy and mm. excellent at whatever you're doing. And if you're, and, and you can take whatever you're doing and saying that this is, ex- is contributing to the expansion of the universe because every experience of life, whether it's one day or a hundred years, adds to the experience of the universe equally. The infant that dies at birth, that experience is equal to the woman who lives to be 100 years old. It's equal. It's exactly equal. There is no difference. But there's a, there's, there are different experiences, but there's no difference in value of the experience. Hmm. How about that? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that's all you're here to do. All you're here to do is experience it. You're not here to build buildings or create anything uh, of, of substance that's going to last forever. Mm. Because none of that will ever matter. None of that will matter in 10 minutes, let alone 100 years or 1,000 years. Mm. You're trying to hold on to Im- immortality by creating something that will last. It's just <laughs> like throwing leaves in the wind. None of that matters. Mm-hmm. Do what you're inspired to do, and you will be led to do what gives you bliss. And as long as you judge that as blissful and enjoyable, that's all you need to do. The only thing that matters is how you feel. The only thing you're ever doing is either feeling good or bad. We are hoping that you will spend more time feeling good. And when you spend more time feeling good, you will be guided to more good feeling times. Hmm. Yes. That's it. Okay. That's the end of this podcast forever. (laughs) That's all we have to say. (laughs) There's nothing else we can say other than that. (laughs) The final (laughs) podcast right now. We are oh, hi everyone! We, yeah. we need you to see it. We need you to say it in fifteen million different ways. <laughs> we have infinite and in ways. fifteen minutes. Yeah. We have infinite mm-hmm. ways of talking about this. Well, this has been a joy for us. Does but anyone... what about Kate? Kate, I'm good. I'm good. They know I'm going with the flow tonight. It's it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Kate has. Um, is getting some really big answers lately. Yes, I am. Thank <gasps> you. They're, they're pretty amazing. Yeah. I oh. agree. So reread your answers, ask more questions, and until next time, we are complete. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.